Hi everyone, um, my name is Georgie and I help to lead the global SEO strategy at Bumble Inc. Um, I also work, used to work at Impression, so it's nice to see some familiar faces and thanks everyone for coming today. Um, today I'm going to be talking you through how you can prove the value of an organic investment to your C-suite. In today's current economic climate, now more than ever, it's imperative that you can communicate effectively and confidently to your C-suite so you can really show the impact of a whole range of the organic channels investments to your organization executives to help gain buy-in in the longer term um, yeah, and across the future. So, um, Just a quick view of our agenda. So in today's talk, I'm going to be defining how you can talk through organic tactics to your C-suite, um, how you can identify different types of language to really get through to your C-suite. Um, how many times am I going to say C-suite today? If anyone can count, <laughs> like, just go for that. Um, how you can gain a range of tips when communicating to your C-suite and how you can leave an impressionable impact when also communicating performance to really help supercharge your organic growth. Cool. Um, so before interacting with your C-suite, it's, <laughs> it's important to be able to accurately define organic as an impactful channel for your organization. So in order to move the needle on key business metrics and that matter to the C-suite, it's crucial that you can gain buy-in across a whole range of organic channels. And when I'm talking about organic today, this can be a multitude of different channels. So this can be SEO, ASO, digital PR, <laughs> CRO, um, and, and more. Um, and then when it comes to boardroom conversations with your C-suite, they're really going to appreciate um, just a little bit of context. You're not going to get a, a super long amount of time with your C-suite, but just so you can give a little bit of context around the overall channel um, to, really, to help them fully understand around what you're discussing. And then also for you to be able to understand the current impact that you're giving to the bottom line um, and the commercial impact to, um, through your channel to the C-suite. It's also important that you're able to build powerful and persuasive narratives to your execs. Um, the reason of this is that by through educating them on the overall importance, this will hopefully be able to move them into action or if you currently don't have the um, if you currently don't have the budget to date, this will hopefully help you to gain a small amount of budget to help you test and validate your certain channels to then hopefully gain um, overall investment in the longer term. And then third, um, it's super important when, um, when you're pitching organic project or channel to your C-suite to gain ongoing, on, ongoing buy-in that you fully engage your, um, your business, business leaders. And the overall reason that I with this is if you do not do not do that, then surely your organic cha channels are never going to get off the ground. So yeah, super important with that. But how? <laughs> Big question. <laughs> so how do you go about effectively defining and communicating organic? As senior marketers and key decision makers, we need to prove organic's worth to the executives within our company. You can do this through effective upwards communication. This basically means that you need to understand the challenges of each individual C-suite before you can even approach them. So what you need to do is that you need to be able to articulate how organic channels are going to be the solution for their specific challenges and what action needs to be done to get the full job done. So you've identified the opportunity and also how organic can impact the key business metrics, you then need to be able to effectively communicate to team members how, you can understand, how they can understand and respect these specific channels. And this subsequently means using their language. Um, you need to be using their language, the metrics that they care about, to make sure that you're really impacting the bottom line, you're having the commercial impact of the marketing investment, and you also want to excite them a little bit. So I think first of all, um, a big call out is do not assume what matters to your C-suite. Um, every single organization and C-suite are different. Um, so, so with that in mind, just a big call out I want you to go back for today, do, do, not, um, do not assume what matters for your C-suite. I think depending on the size of your organization, so if it's a little bit smaller or it could be an extremely large organization, try and get input from the C-suite directly around what specifically matters to them. 
if that's too far of a reach and your C-suite members will not be speaking to you, try and go to the most senior person as possible so you can really understand what matters for them. But I think looking at the C-suite as a collective to start off with, it's really um, they should, as a collective, want to know um, what the overall organic competition is looking like in the market, what your current share of voice is, and what is the maximum possible return from your channel versus what you're forecasting to get off the back of it. I think especially if you're new to a business, um, you must know who your C-suites actually are. Um, and you must have a clear understanding on how you can best evangelize your organic channels to each one of them. So I'm going to go through looking at some typical C-suite roles um, and some key metrics which could potentially, they could potentially be, um, they could potentially care about. Um, but yeah, just as a caveat, do not assume what I mentioned today will matter to your C-suite because it definitely could change. So at the top, looking at your CEO, this should be the leader and probably the main face of your company. They usually are interested in the overall performance of the company as a whole, and they want to understand probably the contribution of your organic channels will be having on the business. Therefore, this could matter around uh, the this could matter around specific specific KPIs in your company, such as downloads, revenue, um, signups, whatever your main KPI will be. But then they'll also have a couple more um, extra contribu contributional metrics, such as return on investment and overall market share versus your search competitors. And then from a CFO perspective, these the CFOs usually care about overall company performance, but they will also care about budgets and forecasting because they'll be, they'll be the people who decide whether you get the budget or not, so you really want to get them on side. So therefore, CFOs are going to be understanding what you're asking for from your pitch, whether it will have the correct return on investment that you believe will bring the revenue back to the company. So a couple of metrics which they'll be considering is budget efficiency, operational costs, and then the forecasting and return on investment versus other channels which require budget as well. The chief operational officer, they care about the overall operation of the company. So a couple of metrics which they'll definitely be caring about are operational costs, your cross-functional objective contribution, any business intelligence side of things, cost efficiencies, and if you're complying to your company. Uh, the chief marketing officers, they will generally care about the overall demand generation portfolio. Usually, they'll be bought in around SEO. I mean, luckily, hopefully, they, they, they definitely, or organic as a whole, they, they should be. And they will generally understand the overall importance that organic channels can bring. So therefore, the main metrics that they'd usually care about are conversion rate optimization, um, acquisition costs, and return on investment versus other channels. And then finally, uh, chief technology officers. So I think within an organic strategy, in a modern organic day strategy, CTOs are super important. These are the people who are fully aware about the product, mo product or service roadmap, they're fully up to date about what's happening. They're going to be one of the key people to unlock what's going to happen in X, Y, and Z amount of months. Therefore, it's really important that they are fully bought into your overall organic strategy. And a couple of metrics which they will care about are site performance and product and product development and overall adoption rate from your consumer base. So as I said earlier, do not assume that these metrics will matter to your C-suite, but hopefully it'll give you a bit of an idea around what you can expect. And I think as organizations over the past couple of years have been growing to the overall consumer needs, C-suite roles have been evolving. So we're seeing a couple of uh, chief officer roles, such as chief digital officer, chief automation officer, chief green officer arising. So I haven't mentioned all of these today, just from a time-specific basis. As I said earlier, if that is the case, just feel free to reach out as to the closest person possible to gain the understanding on where uh, what metrics do matter to them. Fab. So now you're aware of the C-suite members identified and what metrics matter most to them, but how can you really master the overall communication with the C-suite? 
As I'm sure most of you are aware, the C-suites are extremely busy. They're juggling different business priorities, so time that you're going to get with them is going to be super slim. So often, often, more than often, they're top-down thinkers, and they really appreciate the direct approach that you're going to be having with them. So when you have these opportunities to speak to the C-suite, I'll take you through how you can make the most of your communication with them and push to get your channels buy-in. So, um, effective communication is a crucial skill. It's even more crucial when you're communicating with the C-suite, um, as these leaders may require different information to make critical business decisions. So, you need to make sure that you're fully prepared from that perspective. And also, with their diverse responsibilities, you need to make sure that you make the most out of every single exchange within the shortest amount of time. Therefore, when communicating with the C-suite, um, you must be fully prepared for any single interaction. That could just be a quick, a quick catch-up call with them, a more longer uh, channel proposal with them, or an overall performance review. You have to make sure that you're fully prepared. Therefore, make sure that you know everything about every single area that you're going into it with, because they could come back with answers. As I mentioned earlier, you may not get a lot of time with them. However, if you're new to the business or if you've only had a couple of interactions, I recommend spending a couple of minutes just to give them a brief context on where you are on the current organic landscape, just so they can make the link between the organic value and then the return on the investment that you're proposing. Also, be sure to make sure everything is simple and concise. I'll talk, talk this through and through today. It's really important. This way, you'll make sure that they have a couple of key takeaways from what you're proposing, and hopefully this will, go at, this will act as a through line from your next conversations with them. Also, um, make sure that you present facts and not assumptions. Uh, this one's really important because I think as, I think as, as an SEO um, through and through, it's easy to say, I know this will work, but I mean, you can't just have everything on thought, can you? You need to make sure that you have the data to like fully, fully, fully back that up. So when you're making a recommendation, as a rule of thumb, have a, have a couple of supporting arguments to make sure you're really honing in the point, showing that you're doing the grounded analysis to make sure that your recommendation is being seen to bring value to the business. Also, actively listen. It may seem like a simple thing to do. Um, however, the C-suite have been fully trained on how to actively listen. When you're presenting to them, they'll be probing anything you say to make sure they're getting the most out of, out of this whole encounter, because at the end of the day, they'll be using this information to make some really difficult business decisions. So when they're responding to your overall, um, overall presentation, it's important that you're also paying attention and actively listening back. That way, you're making sure that this is a positive conversation. You can use the a positive tone of voice to make sure everything stays um, within the realm of the meeting and making sure that there's no confusing questions going in between. Also on that, also on that um, make sure that this is a two-way dialogue as opposed to a monologue because you want to make sure this will make the most out of every single encounter, and this will also help to strengthen your overall um, relationship with the C-suite. And then finally, anticipate questions. So where, where, whatever, whatever interaction with the C-suite, there's bound to be questions. They're going to be probing everything you're saying, as I mentioned earlier. So everything that you've prepared, just make sure that everything you can think about, you're prepared from it from your side as well. That way, that shows that you've done the groundwork, you've done the analysis, you're 100% the, on your recommendation, and that shows that you're extremely confident going forward as a business leader that this will work for the business. By aligning your company OKRs with organic channel solutions to help over overcome challenges or meet goals, this can really help to com communicate your channel's value and expected impact. So I've pulled together just a, a couple of general uh, company OKRs. So the first one could be company growth and scaling. So as an example, by using SEO as a channel, you could help drive qualified organic, qualified organic traffic, increase brand awareness, and increase sales and registrations. So you're seeing the challenge, the company is struggling with growth, 
how can organic um, and overall SEO solutions help with that? Pointing out another example. So if your company is looking to improve overall cost efficiencies across the business, you could say that SEO again, or organic channels as a whole are extremely cost efficient, as you've seen from our wonderful presentations today, and they can really help to drive long-term sustained organic traffic. And then lastly, organic can really help to increase cross-functionality amongst the business. This will help to deliver savings across other marketing channels. For example, sharing data sets. Rather than just using your silo data set, you can spot different opportunities from, from, from example, um, the UA team. So however you choose to communicate to the C-suite, your presentation must be structured, top-down, and concise. You also must ensure that this is focused on the outcomes. So if I'm presenting something to the C-suite, for example, and I want to get through um, budget to house uh, a new content hub, I could have this example slide. So within the, within the heading, making sure that if no one wanted to read the slide. They could just read the title, and they'd get everything they needed from that. So for example, organic traffic currently accounts for x percent of traffic and x percent of revenue. With x, rev with x investment, we could scale through an expanded content suite to drive x million per year through SEO. So on the left-hand side, you can quickly take some screenshots of your current organic traffic and revenue. And then using SEO forecasting, you can see what you predict with this investment to show the impact. This is a super clear example that they should hopefully understand um, from a graph perspective, the overall impact on their core business metrics. And then after you hopefully gain buy-in from your organic channels, the communication really doesn't stop there. In order to continue to foster and nurture your, your relationship with each individual C-suite members and the C-suite as a whole, you need to continually report on performance. By continually reporting on performance, this will give the executive team full transparency on how you're performing, and especially how their investment is performing post-launch. So in order to report, you need to really consider how the C-suite would best digest this information, and again, not assume this. I've put together a couple, of, a couple of examples here about how you could, how you could potentially report from my experience, um, and hopefully this could help for you as well. The first one is dashboards. So if your C-suite are likely to frequently check in on performance, usually on their own time, um, and this is especially important if you work across different time zones, a dashboard could, be, an automated dashboard could be an amazing. Um, an amazing thing to create as a part of reporting to give them that ownership to check in on performance at any point. This also shows that you're not trying to hide anything and that <laughs> um, the, the performance is there for them to see. A couple of examples from my experience which are really good tools for uh, dashboards um, would be Google Data Studio, now coined Looker Studio, I think. I keep getting that wrong. Um, internal BI tools that you may have within your business or different third-party specific SEO tools or other organic channels have amazing plugins that you could use within your data. From a reporting standpoint, so you could use different channels such as Google Docs, which you can just have as one long document. You could have email, Slack, again, however your C-suite team would best digest this information. Reporting like this is um, make sure that you as a business leader, make sure that you have control around the reporting cadence. So you can have a discussion with your C-suite team how often they'd like to see it. Usually like bi-weekly or monthly um, is recommended. Um, this also gives the executive team grounding on when they expect to receive a result. So hopefully they won't be checking in in between that as well because they know that it's going to be coming in in two weeks, one month, etc. And again, this will really help to increase the transparency on performance. And then lastly, presentations. They can be a great way to deliver concise um, information around performance, as well as baking in time for that two-way monologue between the C-suite. This will also help to clear up any potential concerns around performance that the ELT may have. 
So for example, if, um, if your project isn't going as expected, you can have clear action points around what you're currently doing to help turn that performance around with their existing investment. And this will hopefully help to um, build trust within your relationship. Again, you're not hiding anything. You're doing everything you can with that, that current investment. A couple of examples that you can use for presentation formats could be Google Slides, PowerPoint, or Canva. We've all got some really cool design options there. And then to summarize, in order to prove the value of an organic investment to the C-suite, you really need to build powerful narratives backed up by extensive analysis to ensure what you're proposing is the right option for your company and will also bring the most amount of return on investment, especially during this economic climate we're currently in. Spend some time digging in what currently matters to your C-suite as a whole and also each individual member in the C-suite to make sure that you're directly speaking to them throughout your organic solutions. Repeated it a couple of times, but be sure to keep everything simple and concise, so whether that's presentations or when you're speaking, to make sure that they're coming away with the, the main recommendation, your supporting arguments. This will really help um, for when you have future discussions. Be sure to align up your company objectives with organic solutions. This is a really good way to get in their good books because you're already doing most of the work for them. And then finally, communicate performance with uh, a range of different stakeholders with that continu continual reporting. Thank you. <laughs>